My friends and I have recently started our brand new D&D campaign, and with a new campaign comes new characters, and new characters means new minis. Minis that are all going to be in need of hero level paint jobs. Today we're going to be painting the first of three. Lily, our half elven bard. Created on Hero Forge and printed by a local print store, Lily has a somewhat simple design. Not overly complex with dozens of little details like a lot of complex character minis. Don't get me wrong, complex minis have their place, but Lily is a travelling bard. She's not an adventurer, she's not a mercenary, so why would she have all of the extra gear that an adventurer might have? So then the question becomes, how do we elevate a simple miniature like this to be a tier above all of the mobs and NPCs and infantry that'll be on the table next to it? How do we make a simple mini a standout on the table? The approach today will be focusing on two key things, texture and contrast. But before we do get going on the topic of contrast, I want to hear your thoughts before you've heard mine. What's your favourite way to push your hero minis a level higher than the other units on the table? What's your favourite way to make your special units really shine? Alright, back to it. Contrast goes a long way in painting interesting minis. There are some great examples of this all over YouTube. Take the Squidmar channel, for example. Their style lends itself perfectly to using bold contrast as the focal point for their miniatures. But I don't want to change my style that drastically. Instead, I'll introduce contrast with my paint choices, blending it in with my existing style using texture, as we mentioned earlier. But more on that later. With Army Painter's new Fanatic line, we have access to families of colours, such as deep greens, each with six levels of brightness. But we won't be strictly sticking to these groups for this paint job. Instead, to introduce a little bit more interest, we'll be taking different levels of brightness from a few different colour families. For Lily's dress, a shadow tone of a rich green will match nicely with the Heroforge colour selection. But rather than working through the Deep Greens family, we'll change for our mid-tone and highlight to their turquoise line, making sure to select higher brightness levels for each colour. This will create striking contrast, not only in the brightness, but also adding some depth to the colour itself. And how am I going to blend this in with the rest of my collection that doesn't have this stylized level of contrast? That is where texture comes in. By selectively applying this heavy contrast to specific areas of the model that we can add some visual texture to. For Lily, this means applying some texture to all of her cloth elements. Specifically, the green skirt is a standout here. Rather than applying our highlights and smooth transitions, working from a dark green in the recesses to a bright turquoise, we're instead going to hatch these colours on, giving the impression that the light is almost bouncing off of the fibres of the dress. This way there will be a clear visual distinction for why the dress has far more contrast than say her hair or her skin will later on, which will all be shaded in the same manner as my other models, albeit with a little bit more care. This contrast will add depth and a pop of colour to our model, giving us a point of focus. Something to grab attention and say this is a hero model, look at this one. This choice of colour and highlighting style is going to set it apart from the models around it that are all simply layered with subtle shadow tones or highlights. And this theory can be applied no matter what your army or style, when you have a character, a hero model, a mini that you really want to stand out. Take one or two parts of the model and alter them slightly to your regular paint scheme. Push their contrast, add some texture, change something about the model to make it more striking. Do you normally do your metallics with true metallics? Maybe try non-metallic metal instead? Are your glowing weapons limited to the blades? Maybe go for an OSL effect? Even something simple like a more extravagant decorative base can really push this point. The key takeaway here is just to pick a focal point and elevate it a level or two above the rest of your army, your NPCs or your collection. Now that our model has its bright attention grabbing details, we just need to make sure to bring the rest of the mini up to that same level of polish. So I'll be returning in some places to my usual style of simple layered highlights, but taking my time to make sure that this mini looks the best that it can. This will allow the dress to be a standout element of an overall higher effort mini than some of the NPCs or infantry that will be around it. Starting the skin we begin with a darker skin tone. Lily's quite pale so we won't be going too dark. Our shadow tone will be wet blended on the model with an already pretty light skin tone to give us a nice smooth transition from our shadow to our mid tone. Then we can move to a quite pale skin tone and come in with a thinned down coat of this highlight to bring the skin tone up to the correct level. To give the skin a little more life, and this is something I only do with my higher effort models, I come in with a very thin glaze of a red magenta colour on the cheeks and the nose. 
I'll then come in and reapply a thin layer of our highlight over top. This gives a little bit of colour to the areas of the face that would have a little more blood flow, to help the mini seem more believable at a glance. And with minis this small, I don't usually worry about painting the eyes. Something like a Space Marine I might go in and do those details, but for something like this I don't think it's necessary. But that's just my opinion. Next up, all of our browns. I'll do a quick base coat of the same brown over most of these details. The scarf, the loot, and the boots all get the same base coat. Meanwhile the hair will still get the same brown, but mixed with a little bit of black, to better align it with Lily's colour scheme while keeping in the same hue as not to muddy the colours on the model. For the trim of the dress we'll use the same process as the turquoise, but rather than changing the colour and the brightness on these browns, we'll try and keep these areas as close to the same family of colours as our paint selection will allow. The browns are really just here to back up the dress, to really convey to the viewer that this is what the dress's fabric looks like on this model. For the scarf, keeping true to the Hero Forge design, we'll change up our mid-tone to give some differentiation from the rest of the browns. And this is a great way to vary a mini slightly. If you have four or five different browns on a model, you can often base coat all of those with the same colour, and then create colour difference using different mid-tones or textures. Our scarf, despite having the same shadow tone as the dress trim and the boots, will look completely different because of its more desaturated mid-tone, which will look perfectly fine once we give it a glaze of a warmer brown to bring it back to the correct hue of the shadow tone. The scarf will mostly just get a traditional layered highlight, but I will do some subtle hatching texture to this as well, just to signify that this is also fabric like our dress, albeit a slightly different material. The loot, however, gets a glazed gradient of red tones, completely brown at the centre working out to a natural redwood feel at the edges. And once again, being inspired by the Heroforge model, this will get a classic edge highlight along the top of the loot. For our bright yellow ribbon, I will employ a similar technique to our dress's fabric. Not being quite as harsh with the contrast of our brightness, but making sure to have a really saturated bright yellow which will be a good colour contrast to the rest of the dress around it. Similar to the scarf, I'll introduce just a little bit of that hatching, just to display that this is also a fabric, but not being so harsh to have it compete with the dress. And now for the hair, and I'm really happy with how this hair comes out it ends up looking genuinely quite soft. To achieve this, I do my highlights in very thin coats, allowing me to build up opacity of my highlights over time, creating strands in the hair but also horizontal lines where large waves of the hair are catching light, very similar to cartoon or anime hair highlights. With these smooth, layered highlights in, I then come in with a thin coat, somewhere between a layer and a glaze, to pull those highlights closer to the hair's base coat colour, which helps to pull any jumps in brightness even closer together, giving a super smooth look to those highlights, while still getting that nice detail of the painted strands where the light is hitting the hair. I really do think that working in this way and ending it with a glaze really helps to pull all those highlights together, and gives a really soft look. Now it's just a matter of picking out all the little details and spending some time on the base. One of my biggest recommendations on Hero Minis is not to phone it in on the base. Sometimes you can make a quick base look great on a Hero model, but when you have a model like this, where there is one standout colour with a lot of contrast, the last thing I want is a base with three or four high contrast colours, using something like speed paints or a wash. All that would do is pull your attention away from the Mini. Instead, a simple brown dry brush on the dirt and some nice layered highlights and subtle colour variation on the bricks will help to make this base look up to the level of the mini without stealing the show. Then we can finally come in, hit the base rim with a bit of black, and Lily, our half-elven bard, is ready to set off on her adventure. Would you like to 
describe who we're seeing in the back mm -hmm. of this carriage. Hello. My name is Lily. I am a young half elf. I have long brown hair, some common clothes, and I'm always carrying my loot. How are you? If you're interested in seeing Lily's journey unfold, jump on over to my group's D&D channel, Roll for Adventure. We're now on episode 3 of our brand new campaign, set in our own homebrew world of Marion. But don't worry, we've journeyed to a brand new continent for this campaign, so any details or lore you'll be learning along with the players. And again, leave a comment down below telling me your favourite way to make your hero minis or special units stand out on the table. Please consider liking the video if you did enjoy it, or even if you just learnt something while you were here. Subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop when we paint up the rest of our heroes for this adventure very soon. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a good one.